Mm-hmm. I think what I'm going to start off with is this Leo Rush situation. I knew as soon as you said toxic uh, and backstage, I knew it was about this man. Now, what did now? I have the story here, right? What do you know about the whole Leo Rush table speech before so, I break it down to So you. what I heard from Leo Rush, they was on tour in Europe. Like, this is the first part of it. Mm-hmm. They was on tour in Europe. And the way that WWE does is a little bit of a hazing. Not hazing in, like, almost a college frat way, but in the idea of, like, somebody needs water, that you get it for them, or somebody needs a towel, you grab their towel, you, you help the veterans with their bags or something, pretty much paying your respect. Almost a little bit of a golfer. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, I mean, I could get that. A caddy to call, yeah. All right, there you go. Yeah. I, I get that. That makes sense to me. So uh, Finn Balor needed some water. And Finn Balor seen as more of a veteran on the roster. Granted, he paid his dues when he came in too. But and, um, Leo Rush was like, no, I don't, I don't do that. And the, it kind of turned, turned ugly at that point. And then other wrestlers start commenting on it like, yo, I mean... You understand? Even I even saw when Mark Henry said, "Like I used to do this for the for the Rock, mm-hmm. or I've done this for this person. I've seen Stone Cold do this. I've seen Taker do this." So he was commenting all over on people doing these things, and that the fact that Leo Rush didn't want to pay his respects has left them in a sour mood, and that was heavy. Now the second part I heard about Leo Rush is, I mean, his contract is coming up. Mm-hmm. So the contract that they offered him, I don't have the exact figures, but it was it was a six digit number mm-hmm. as I remember it. Three hundred thousand. Three hundred thousand for five years, mm-hmm. some along those lines. Three hundred thousand for five years, and they put that in front of him, and he scoffed at it and said, "Double it, double you, <laughs> what, what, you double it." Okay, so. These are the two things I heard about him that's left a bad taste in multiple people's mouth right now. Mm. What did so? What do you have? Okay, so this is what this is what's going on. Cause I made sure I did my research. There's a lot of things with Fightful.com and a lot of things of that nature. Mm-hmm. So the backstage heat is going that uh, Leo Rush is rubbing his peers the wrong way. Mm-hmm. It's not all about just the, the whole water bottle thing. Okay. So there has been. Things of saying that Leo Rush has been bringing his wife backstage to rehearsals. There has been uh, things saying without that, permission. What, what, yeah, there has been things okay. saying that Leo Rush has been bringing uh, his people back to uh, backstage, and when security would stop them because they're not allowed backstage, you know, he, he would have kind of like, uh, his people there with him. So the thing was that Leo Rush uh, saying that he didn't like all the things that you know I'm, he's there to try to be a WWE superstar. So when all these rumors went around. Fightful.com, no superstars ever done this because WWE superstars are not allowed to talk to outside things. Right. You keep in house business yeah. in house. So he goes to talk to Fightful.com about his side of the story about what's been going on. So Leo Rush says that, you know, it's not a race thing, but he said it does not a good look when you have this black kid carrying around his bags and all these other superstars' bags. Then he has to go with Bobby Lashley. He, he, uh, he doesn't mind Bobby Lashley. He's enjoying working with him, but he's not invited to the meetings with Bobby Lashley. He feels as though there's no royalties being given to him for the uh, catchphrase that's on Bobby Lashley's shirt. And also, he has to get his own rental car and, his do- and pay for his own hotels to get around with Bobby Lashley, and he doesn't make enough money for that. So... Then he doesn't. Uh, Finn Balor came to him and approached to him about the wife situation. Said, "I don't think Vince will think that's a good idea." And then he said, uh, "You know, it's cool." But he said him and Finn Balor are cool, according to his words. Mm-hmm. And that, uh, you know, he's fine. But when Mark Henry tried to ask him, you know, if there's a problem, he said there was no problem. And then Mark Henry felt bad because he lied right to his face because he noticed some heat right. backstage with uh, Leo Rush and he's trying to do the best he can to help Leo Rush out but Leo Rush didn't want to kind of accept his help mm-hmm. so now it's going back huh? I mean if I if I could jump in for mm. a second if Leo Rush is having a problem with these things I mean I can understand that I mean it's almost like the essence of the show ride along right mm. this is why you ask people yo can I ride with you 
Can I can I just be there? Can I just be a fly on the wall? That way you can split costs, everything of mm. that nature. I, I I don't know if you, this was covered, but is he doing this? Was this done, or is he just trying to take it all on him? Well, it, that they didn't really get too much into, but it's, it, it reminded me of a story. I was listening to Sound Master Sounds Off, and he brought up something that it was a story that Alistair Black had said. I was like, I remember this story. When Alistair Black was invited to the main roster, he was. Go clean up the locker rooms, have water bottles ready for the talent and stuff when they get back. And then Roman Reigns came up there and said, I don't want you to clean up another locker room. Right. Because you're one of us. I heard that story before too. Yeah. You're, you, you know, you're one of the superstars so that you don't have to do this kind of stuff anymore. So, you know, the times have changed. In NXT, nobody gets nobody else's bags. Right. And this, they do this in all kinds of sports. Football, basketball, hockey, stuff like that. It's all, it's all been doing it. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, Honestly, we are past that point. If you are a 300-pound guy, you can get your own bags. You know, and you, it, it's just that whole rookie mentality, stuff like that. No, because see, the problem is these guys are superstars like you too. And, you know, we are just beyond that point. Now, Vince McMahon may have that still that mentality in his head, mm-hmm. but we are beyond. NXT, they all come in there. They all have to build their ring. Velveteen Dream is still building rings. Yep. You know, that teaches humility to a lot of people. I think Leo Rush didn't stay down in NXT too long. Because one thing about Leo Rush, when I see him in the Indies and when he came to House of Hardcore and I see him up here in Philly, mm-hmm. one thing I realized about Leo Rush is as, as much as talented as that man is, because he's talented, mm-hmm. and WWE would be a fool to let him go, he has an ego problem. And I think with that ego problem, because, you know, he comes from D.C., he knows he's about, stuff like right. that. But Leo Rush does have a chip on his shoulder, and he has an ego. Not, and I'm saying he's the only one that does have that. Right. So, with that being said, he is rubbing the veterans the wrong way. There's some You can be respectful to your veterans right. and still, you know, uh, be you. Right. When it comes to the royalty things, I'm like, I don't think Bobby Lashley's shirt is selling enough for you to have royalties. To be honest with you, <laughs> and to be to be because you say Lashley, Lashley, I have to say I don't think that's selling enough for you. Right. And I understand, you know, you, you have to take all these bumps, uh-huh. you know, at night because you know you're getting run over by Strowman or stuff like that because you, you get the manager on the outside. Well, he said that's his point to be there with Lashley. That's what he's doing as a heel manager. That's yeah. What's supposed to happen. Yeah. <laughs> now, well, at first, my wife told me, she was saying he was making 300000 for five years. Right. And I said, I make more than that. When it comes to if you split up 300000 for five years. Right. However, it's 300000 per year. Wow. Okay. So that it, changes that completely. Deadly. So I'm saying, so... Him saying double that, I'm like, now nah, look, comp, you you still got people who was on top of the, the total pole who's st- who's making eight hundred, nine hundred thousand. I mean, if we doing the simple math there, so that's six hundred thousand a year, right? Yeah. Six times five is thirty, right? Mm-hmm. So you put the thirty, the comma in the middle, three million. Is that what we talking about? That's He's it. asking for three million dollars for, for five, five years. years. I'm not gonna say that he isn't worth it. I'm gonna say he ain't worth it yet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that that's something he can get eventually, but from where he at in WWE right now, I don't see it. I, there's there's still something that he has to do. There's still there's still things that he has to be. I like I said, humbled on, which I right. think him coming to the main roster as fast as he did. He was the first two or five live guy to come to the main roster. He was before Mustafa Ali. Damn. He was for Cedric Alexander. He was before before Buddy Murphy. Yeah, yeah, thinking about it, yeah. Yeah, and so, I mean, once they took all the Christmas off Raw and put him on 205 Live, mm-hmm. he's the first one to come up. And he, on, there only was a splash in the in the pan at NXT mm-hmm. uh, down there. He only had about two matches. Right. And then, and then he got he, he got the doghouse because of the whole Emma tweet. Yep. And we had seen NXT, but he came right from NXT up to 205 Live, up to Raw. So he was given a lot too soon. And I think, and I know he's probably still on a developmental contract, mm-hmm. but to be offered, th- now once again, I'm not a professional wrestler. Right. You know, sometimes you just don't want to be doing all the damage to your body for this, this short amount of money, but for 300000 a year, I think that's enough 
to probably sustain. To upset. Shit, I know my I got general <laughs> managers Look. that I used to work for that barely made a hundred thousand a year. I, I'm gonna attempt to throw this argument in there, mm. but this argument ain't gonna hold us on much ground. Let me tell you the truth. It ain't. Beginning. Yeah, I, are you right? I agree with you on that. Um, I can't say I, I'm not in that man' pocket. So if I had to travel three three sixty five days in a year, let's say he traveled two hundred. Mm. It's probably more than that. But let's say he traveling two hundred, paying all these rental cars and everything of that nature. I can see that adding up. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna say I see it adding up to three hundred thousand, but I am gonna say this is the point when you would pull somebody and be like, "Well, we both going to the same place. How about we work on this together?" So I'm assuming it can add up greatly if you're paying all these rental cars, all these hotel fees and everything of that nature but that's all gonna break down to if he's doing this by himself because mm-hmm. if he's not I'm it, it's not adding up yeah. and it should not be doing it by himself because that doesn't add up that just doesn't make sense but once again Bobby is on as a veteran so does Bobby get the buses that he has to drive because he's Bobby Lashley because Vince got to like it to Bobby Lashley mm-hmm. does Bobby get on the private planes with Vince because Leo's only on the private planes. I mean, even if not, there's enough other people there. It's like, hey, guys, can I join in on your group? But now if you got this kind of heat, that's what I'm saying. Fair. If you got this kind of heat, nobody's going to want to be around you. Like the Enzo heat. You're right. Yeah, so. And that's going to fall out on um, Leo to do something and rush himself out of the situation. Yeah, so the only thing now also is reports that, like, uh, Mark Henry, when he tried to talk to him, and he said there's nothing wrong, but he says and there's another a veteran. They didn't name who this veteran was. Mm-hmm. Who was asking Leo if he's cool, and then he he responded to you not my boss. I only I work for Vince. See, I've had people do that to me before at my job. Yeah, and they do that in your face, and then he goes back and tells Vince or tells uh or the higher authorities, and these authorities been coming to the veterans and asking them. Like, well, did you say this a little rush? You snitching. Uh-huh. That ain't a good look neither. Uh-huh. So, w- with that being said, it's kind of like, Leo, you can't do... See, you you gotta be... You gotta have some form of humility. I'm not asking you to go out and get water. All, this multi-million dollar company, I'm pretty sure they got an ice box right there at Gorilla Position right. where you can get some water when you come in or some Gatorade or whatever the case may be. Right. I'm pretty sure th- these guys, like somebody like Bobby Lashley or Braun Strowman, can carry their own fucking bags. It's fine, mm-hmm. and I understand of not want to be a look. And you know, also, it may be a thing that I don't want my wife seeing me do that. You are a man, no matter how small, big, or something you are. You are a man, and you, you should be a respected man. I'm also gonna throw this out there. If I feel you there, mm-hmm. you make a lot of sense there. But why is his wife there? Shouldn't be. No, his wife shouldn't be. Right. Like, I, it's different between doing it in front of your wife and at the same time telling her what happened on the phone. Like, yeah. babe, they got me out here carrying their bags and stuff. It's like, I'm just trying to earn my time. And then I feel like it, if his wife is an intelligent woman, it's like, but you are on TV every week, though. Mm-hmm. Everybody ain't on TV or every week, though. Mm-hmm. So you might have to pay a little to, yeah. be, to get your face out there, to get your time in the ring. Just but, saying. But I, I, like I said, there, there, there are other ways he can do that. Because, like he said, he did bring up a good point. You have this multi-billion dollar company who has all these investors, who have all these people, these make-a-wish, and they, you know, saying they're anti boy and stuff like that. And you, and that's what is seen is not a good look. Uh-huh. You see this, you see this black guy carrying around all these. Let's let's face it, these top superstars are white guys. Uh huh. And carrying their bags, it's not a good look for some, for a message that you're trying to send. That's why WWE backed themselves into a hole a lot of time with the bullying and the Susan, Susan G. Coleman stuff and all that right. stuff. They backed themselves into a hole a lot because of what the shit they do. Mm-hmm. And it's like it's almost like a cult. Like they, they got to keep their mouths shut in a way. And it's a very unfortunate situation. So that that's why I vibe him home, but I don't vibe on his. Arrogance. I don't vibe on that. You could be like, you can be humble and awesome, but you may not. If Roman tells you to stop, if they see you in the back and Bobby pulls you to the side, like, yo, bro, you ain't got to do this. 
I will make sure you don't got to do this. Mm-hmm. And if somebody like a Bobby, a Mark Henry, especially a Mark Henry, a Booker T, or somebody, somebody of my peers that's a veteran that's gonna come to me and ask me what's wrong, I'll tell them because you understand them something. A lot of African American talent has ri- has risen since right. back in the day. Right, they've been through worse. Yeah, and, and there are some talent which I still don't understand to this day that. Vince got a love for it. Vince got a love for Mark Henry. I don't get it. Mark Henry still getting paid eight hundred, nine hundred thousand dollars a year. I thought she was about to say R True. Oh, he love R True too, but I, 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 I won't go to R True because R True just just look like a step and fetch it to me. I'm just saying. Uh, I'm sorry, he do, but uh, you ain't sorry. But, but a Mark Henry, somebody who's well respected backstage, mm-hmm. you don't want to piss him off, right? Did, you want him in your pocket, if yeah, anything else. This man had the same attitude that you did coming in there. The world's strongest man, a, a silver Olympic. He was the first Olympic gold medalist coming in. He, If anybody realizes, Kurt Angle was the first Olympic gold medalist. Right. Mark Henry was the first Olympic medalist. He was a silver medalist. Yep. So he had a chip and arrogance on his shoulder, too. And then they they, they, they shipped his ass up there with, with Calvary and Bret Hart. Humbled him a little bit. Mm-hmm. And came back. Mark Henry still not somebody you want to fuck with. Right. You know what I'm saying? But Mark Henry also knows the business. Now he I, I guarantee you Mark Henry's not gonna be one of them guys who's gonna be like this. Or right, you, you gotta put your you gotta put your you know straw pants on and say show balls. Then you ain't gotta do all that. Right. I don't see him saying that. But if he actually had a problem like this is I have a problem with this and he said, All right, look, I'll get you a meeting with Vince or I'll talk to Vince for you. Or see what see something like that. But you know, as a grown man, Vince is gonna want you to come to him personally. Right. As of that nature, so you know it's it's a lot of unfortunate heat for him. They have not been putting him on raw for the past couple of weeks. They haven't. So Leo said, "Release me." Hmm. But then Visto ain't going to want to release you because he knows because he said, "Just release me and I can show you what I can do." Because Leo is a ta- Triple H seen that talent, mm-hmm. and you know the, the the crazy thing about Leo is he's self taught. Mm. He's mm. self-taught. I watched this documentary that he had on YouTube back when he was just, you know, just trying to get his name out there and stuff right. like that. Back when he was still in House of Hardcore. Mm. And I watched this old documentary. It was a nice documentary. The things this guy goes through and the way he just travels and the hunger he got is admiring. Especially with being a small wrestler in this kind of business and being a self-taught wrestler that he is a really great talent. He got his power set up. It's just that somebody got to humble with their ego. I think when he missed the whole NXT thing about going out there and building the ring and going out there and learning some humility, that hurt him. He came up here with a gimmick that was cocky. And then all of a sudden, he did, all he's doing is living out that gimmick. Mm-hmm. So that's the unfortunate thing, you know. About. Hopefully he figures it out. Hopefully he, he slices a humble pie, apologizes who he needs to apologize to, or just... Even if you don't, if you really a dead set and just apologize, pull that person on the side like a man and be like, "Hey, why is this, this, and this going on? I don't fully understand." Mm. Has somebody truly break it down for you? Because even if you're not apologizing to somebody, at least that says to them, "It's like, okay, so you want to understand? Let me teach you this level of the business. Mm-hmm. Got to do something, right? You right? Because you last thing you want is to not be on TV." Especially when you go from TV, be on TV every week. Now you sitting in the back, under contract, not doing anything. We know we're fans. We gonna forget you. Mm-hmm. Worst thing to do is WWE is get forgotten. Cause getting back to the top could be could be a trial. 